Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so ZoneFS features roadmap. So short talk about uh, what's coming up for uh, ZoneFS. And also I'll be happy to, to hear any feedback from, uh, from uh, the audience. How do I switch slides with this one? Left oh, and right. Okay, left and right. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll go through quickly an overview of ZoneFS for, for those of you who don't know uh, this file system. Um, summarize the recent-ish fixes and updates and uh, go through four different features and improvements that, uh, that are being planned. So, ZoneFS, uh, super si simple file system which exposes the zones of a zone block device as files. The files are append only to follow the uh, sequential write required uh, rule of, of zones. And uh, for SMO drive where you may have conventional zones, uh, those files can be uh, fully randomly written. And the zones are grouped, so the zone files, sorry, are grouped together uh, within two directories, CNV and uh, SEC sec, uh, depending on the zone type. And uh, everything then behaves exactly like a regular file system. You can just do LS and see uh, uh, one file per zone uh, for that particular device. Uh, the main point here uh, of the main goal of ZoneFS was to uh, introduce the ability to use Zone Drive with a pure file um, system call interface. So not having to deal with IOctal as zone operations. So everything is completely hidden within uh, file system calls. Like, for example, if you truncate your file to a size zero, uh, you're going to issue, internally the file system will issue zone reset. Conversely, if you um, truncate to the maximum file size, it's zone finish. Yes. Uh, yeah, sorry, just a question regarding that. Uh, what about the punch hole? If somebody calls punch hole on your, you know. Not zone... supported, you cannot do that. <laughs> okay. Because, it, it, uh, so the, the block mapping of files is completely static. It, it's a one-to-one -to, -one to, the, to the LBAs in the zone. So all files are pre-allocated. There's no block allocator in there. It's, it's all, think of it as a Roblox device, but with uh, a per zone uh, file interface. Okay. So it's not fully like compatible. It's not a POSIX file system, not at all. So it doesn't support all the bells and features of modern file systems. Again, writing is append only. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, randomly write the, the offsets in the file. Okay, the position, because we, we have many things. So uh, file system, better FS, have two FS2, the, uh, DM zoned US mapper, which allows you to run XFS C64. That's the simplest way to, uh, to have your application work with zone storage. Of course, there are most likely performance trade off there. It's not uh, necessarily uh, super optimized for that uh, particular type of device. Uh, but using those devices uh, is easy that way. Fully, uh, the, the kernel here provides you a full POSIX behavior. So that's not the case with ZoneFS. So we end up on this, this right side here, uh, where you have to have a, a zone block device compliant application, because again, the sequential write constraint is exposed directly to the user uh, for each file, so for each zone. So it, it is, in a sense, similar to path through and then using the, the block device, uh, raw block device file directly, but uh, the simplification comes from the fact that you don't have to use the uh, zone operation explicitly. It also makes it easier if you want to program your application with different uh, uh, programming languages than C, uh, because the file, uh, the file system called face is, uh, is the normal one, so you can, you can actually use zones from Java or Python or whatnot, uh, any programming language would, would just be fine. Okay, recent updates to uh, ZoneFS. So, uh, Jorgen found a nasty read ahead uh, bug where you would uh, essentially really crash the kernel or lock it up uh, if you were to read uh, the end of a zone file and the kernel triggering read ahead after that. Uh, there was a problem with the implementation of the IOMAP uh, method in ZoneFS, uh, which would trigger an, essentially an infinite loop. So that was fixed. It's all in uh, uh, also backported to LTS. Uh, yes. Sorry, I was just curious how that bug was found. 
uh, Jorgen just had a simple test. He was doing a DD. Uh, what was your test? Where is it? DD from. Yeah. Write something. DD. Uh, DD read the 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 file and uh, the kernel will trigger read ahead for the next uh, blocks and uh, yeah, the IO map would would say I have blocks. It's mapped and where there wasn't any, and it would just end up uh, looping forever. Um, speaking of the read ahead, um, is there anything special the way it has to be done in certain sizes or? Uh, read ahead? Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely not. It's, again, it's, uh, it plugs into the regular file system interface, so you can use FO device if you want to turn off read ahead or change its behavior. All, all of that uh, is support that's VFS layer generic uh, things, so it doesn't change. It was really about generating that bio for the read ahead. You, we should have the IOMAP begin that for that particular problem should have said no. There's no nothing to read, so go away. No, no bio. Uh -huh. But he was trying actually to do something and uh -huh. was wasn't working. Uh, so <laughs> after that, there was a, a few improvements to the explicit open mount option, which uh, tells the file system to use ex uh, to uh, use uh, open zone and closed zone explicit. Uh, Opening and closing of uh, zone for uh, when opening and closing files. Uh, that gives to the user guarantees that if the open system call succeeds when you're trying to uh, open for a file for writing, if the open system call succeeds, you can write your zone, meaning that you will not run into problem with the number of uh, active zones uh, and uh, any other sort of uh, zone resource on the drive side. So there were uh, improvements on that. Uh, there was actually also a bug there that uh, was fixed. And uh, now ZoneFS uh, accounts for both uh, maximum number of open zones and the maximum number of active zones that Drive has. Uh, and uh, related to that, we also added CSFS attributes that uh, expose the, so those limits. And also the current number of files that are being that are that are in an open or active state, so that the user can can tune its uh, its application behavior to uh, to that. So that's all upstream. Uh, it was uh, two three released ago, um, but going forward, there's more we can do. Uh, there is a couple of problems that we we need to address, and improvements that that would be nice to have. So the, the two problems that have been identified so far, uh, again, Jorgen, with his test, so that's the last presentation of uh, this, this, uh, this uh, microconf, uh, discovered that there's some IOTEL latency uh, problems when uh, reading files and you're at the same time also trying to finish the files so doing a truncate to the maximum size. So that increases the latency due to the uh, file locking uh, model. There's also an issue with the fact that ZoneFS uh, creates upfront on mount all inodes and the entry for all files and keep them in memory. So uh, that can lead to a very large uh, memory consumption depending on, on the device you're using. Next, uh, what we want to improve is uh, the use of zone append so that we can improve performance uh, by removing the need for uh, a blocker scheduler. And finally, uh, trying to reduce the, the, the O direct write constraint. So I'll go in more detail, this one. So read diotel latency. So what, what's happening here is that uh, when you read a file, you only need to read lock and, uh, the inode for the file to generate the bio for, for, for that, uh, that file. But if you uh, do a truncate, uh, either resetting, which is not the case we're considering, or uh, finishing the zone, so tr truncating the file to its maximum size, so you make it read-only, essentially. Uh, in that case, you need to take the write lock. And so while you're reading the file, if you want to truncate it to the maximum size, so finish the zone, you're going to have your uh, reads waiting for that command to finish first. But there is no real need for that, because a finish doesn't destroy that app. So you could still go on and read at the same time. There's uh, absolutely no problem there. A reset, yes, destroys the data, so you have to have them uh, being uh, mutually exclusive, but not for, for the finish case. 
And so uh, that should be fairly easy to fix because uh, any change to the uh, inode size are serialized <coughs> with uh, another lock, which is truncate mutex within the file system, uh, which is not taken by read operation. So there should not be any issue in just tweaking essentially the, the inode locking model uh, for that particular operation, finish operation, so that it doesn't delay uh, read uh, commands. Uh, write commands would still be delayed uh, because uh, switching from taking the uh, write lock to the read lock uh, for the finish operation, uh, write would still need the write lock and that will get serialized with the read lock either before or after. And uh, the, the behavior of the write operation in that case would still be consistent with the finish operation itself. So no issue there. So that should be very easy to, uh, to fix and we'll get some nice latency improvements. Next one, uh, releasing memory usage. So I actually wrote this uh, slide thinking of a very uh, trivial uh, fix. Uh, I have a better one actually, so it's not written here, I'm going to talk through it. <laughs> so what happens is that when you mount, uh, uh, the mount uh, context does the report zones, gets the entire list of zones, creates an inode and the entry for every single uh, uh, zone in there and keeps those in memory forever until you unmount. So inodes these days, I think, I think are 128 bytes. Uh, um, the entries are something else. Uh, and if you think of uh, SMR drives and their gigantic capacities these days, and we're talking about 100,000 plus zones. That's a lot of memory. For no good reason, because most of the time application will be writing and reading only a few zones at a time. So, uh, significant memory usage for no good reason. So, what we could do is uh, create those inodes and uh, uh, director entries uh, when we do an open, like any other normal file system. Then the inode cache and the entry cache would speed up, that up, but do memory reclaim uh, uh, when needed, and we'll can just recreate the inode uh, uh, when it's open again. I have a question with regards to um, the inodes, and um, yeah, I guess so. If each zone is like a file, um, where do you uh, keep this metadata? You use your own zone so, just for the inodes, and the so another question. Sorry, but sub question was: um, Do the you know dear entries and inodes exist in memory uh, the entire time? Are they ever flushed? Um, uh, onto the disk, like periodic, or no, no. Oh, okay. So that's if I answer the first question, you'll answer. You you'll answer your second. That will answer your second question. The only metadata I would care about is the file size, which is given to us directly by the right pointer position. And so the metadata for zone FS is actually maintained by the drive itself. All you need to do is a report zone, and you get your metadata. And so, like user permissions and things like that. That's Oh, so like the ownership of files and all of that, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not persistent. So if you change them when you use the, 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 the file system, so all of the system calls work. So you can, for example, change ownership, uh, group ID, user ID, uh, access rights of files. Uh, that's going to be volatile. If you unmount and remount, you're going to go back to the default. So there are uh, mount options where you can actually change the default you want to use for those files. Again, I didn't see that as a, as a huge problem because uh, ZoneFS is much closer to uh, a Roblox device type interface rather than the full POSIX file system. So in that spirit, uh, I didn't go and, and then implement any metadata and journaling that would be necessary for it. Yeah, so you kind of assume exclusive access by a certain Exactly. Uh, I have a question about the report zones. So I, I think you hint to it if the performance hit. So uh, yeah, let, let me finish that one. You understand. So uh, trivial implementation would be we just do a report zone for the uh, the the zone of the file that we're opening. We get our word pointer. We have our file size, file type, etc. All, all all the metadata we need, and we can just initialize our node and go on with other system calls. So instead of doing the report zone on mount for all zones, we do do it when needed uh, on open. <laughs> And we get a performance penalty because we have to wait for the report zone command. But uh, so that's kind of the trivial uh, implementation. 
there is another way to do it, and I thought of it after running the slides, that on mount, we do a report zone, we compact the zone information, something very compact, we keep it around, and when we need the inode, we actually create the inode using that cache information instead of having to do a report zone for every open. That's actually would be a much better uh, implementation that can also save a lot of memory. So I think we can pack everything we need in like 16 bytes uh, per zone. Uh, considering that we are already using more than 128 bytes per zone for the inode, right now it's or an order of magnitude lower memory usage. Uh, than cur the, the, the current implementation. So I think that would be uh, good enough and no performance penalty hit. Okay. Uh, asynchronous zone append. So currently, uh, zone FS uses zone append only for blocking uh, blocking writes. So the write and peer write system call essentially uh, is going to issue a zone append in that case. Uh, any AIO uh, issued to a file will uh, use um, uh, the regular write operation, rec up write, which uh, in, in forces the user to have MQ deadline essentially underneath the, the device, uh, for, for the device, uh, so that we uh, can guarantee that uh, our writes are ordered properly down to the device. That is a huge performance hit, especially on ZNS. Uh, any sort of block out scheduler for an SSD, uh, it's just simply a huge performance hit. So the idea here is to allow um, zone append uh, also for asynchronous I.O. Uh, so what we would need for this is, uh, of course, the ability to return the 64-bit offset, uh, return offset uh, of the zone append. It's actually very trivial to do with the legacy I.O. interface. Uh, a bit more work needed for uh, I.O. ring, but uh, where is he? He's not, yes, he's here. Can Chan introduce the large CQEs for I.O. ring? So, that should be easy to do too now. Uh, there's some hook we need, some additional hook we need for IO map. So uh, I think we can just switch the uh, um, bio operation in the submit bio hook uh, of IO map uh, instead of having to add additional plumbing to uh, IO map that actually Christoph removed recently for some better FS patches. Uh, so all in all, not too hard to do. Um, and also, uh, interestingly, this will allow uh, any file system to return the file offset that was written when doing an O append uh, write. So, is this assuming that the drive will have support for uh, hardware append? Right. No. Oh, okay. So you use emulation code. Append. We we emulate zone append for. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. There's the emulation, code. right? Yes. Okay. But uh, again, so for SCSI, that doesn't remove the need for MQ deadline, but for ZNS, you could completely remove MQ deadline and get way better performance. You could actually get the native performance of your device because you, you get rid of the scheduler. I, for on NVMe, there's no, for on, on the NVMe side, is there, there's, is there um, uh, append emulation on NVMe no. side? Yeah, so what happens on an NVMe drive without append support? It doesn't mount it. That's not supported by Linux for now. It's, oh it's, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, it is. It is uh, supported. Oh yeah. Okay, last one. Uh, allowing buffered write ish. Yes. Sorry. I don't know about him, but I was going to say something. Okay. So as far as append is concerned, it's the drive is exposed, but it's read only. So. The, the drive is what? Uh, it's exposed, NVMe would be there, but it would be read only if append is not there. Uh, correct, I think, yes. Yeah, 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 and that's how it is going for Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, go for it. Someone was trying to talk. No, I was I, I was going to say yes to Kanchan. Uh, right now, when you don't have append, we expose the device as a read only, but we can't do any writes to it uh, in ZNS. Yeah, so this work would not matter. So yeah, no problem. Okay, last one is trying to um, remove the that O direct constraints for write. Again, something that comes from uh, that is similar to uh, Roblox device access, and which is unlike a full feature process file system, we, we, who can deal with non direct writes to zone drives. 
Um, so the idea here is to allow opening a file with autodirect and writing to it. Uh, but we are not a fully POSIX file system, so the, the writes have to remain aligned to, uh, to the device block size because we can't deal with the read modify write of the last sector in the file. That's not possible. We don't have the metadata. It's not a full POSIX file system. So that constraint will remain. But then your write would become something like an OSYNC, uh, uh, an OSYNC uh, type write where you, uh, the application is utilized and the write goes directly to, uh, to, to the device. But it's not going to be uh, an OSYNC implementation because that would mean that we rely on the page cache and we are, don't have any guarantee that the page cache is actually writing, going to write anything sequentially. So that, that uh, removing of OData and then uh, using the page cache will be implemented within um, ZoneFS itself, and essentially what we have to do is that when we receive a write, we allocate a folio, copy the data in there, issue the, issue the bio, add the folio to the page cache, and now we have a preloaded page cache with writes that are essentially uh, the same as direct writes with the difference that we have the, 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 the copy now. You can still do direct writes, of course, if you, if you want to, but if you uh, uh, prefer doing buffer each write, or at least writes where you preload your page cache because you know you're going to read again later, uh, you can get better, better performance with that. And there's no uh, problem with MMAP because we don't allow uh, writable mappings uh, on ZoneFS because, again, the page cache doesn't guarantee that we are going to write sequentially anything. So that's it. Uh, so, so this one, do you think it can be applied on other file system too? Uh, Which one? Uh, the uh, uh, sequential write, uh, the writes which are not having the ODIRECT constraints. Do you think it can be applied on? I'll just do a no sync. Okay. Or okay. sync open, we'll give you that. Yeah, yes, yes, right. Yeah, makes sense. Perfect. Yeah, it's just that on ZoneFS we can't because the page cache doesn't give us guarantee that it's actually going to indeed, even indeed, in yes. OSYNC case that is going to give us the, the flush of pages okay. in the right order. Yeah, yeah. One more question is probably not related to this, but uh ZoneFS, I think it allowed or it still allows the zone aggregation for for sequential zones, right? So it allows what? Uh zone aggregation for sequential zones. Ah, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, conventional zones. Uh -huh. Are you having plans to do the same for um, for sequential zones too? Aggregate sequential yeah, zones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. That would mean metadata. Yes, bit of it, but uh, you uh, may get yeah, some speed no, too if you if you end up combining. Well, if there is a good use case for it, yeah, we could go there, but right now, no, I'm not planning for that. A, a quick question on the cached metadata for the report zones. So right now you're not updating it, but the plan is that you'll be updating, so it's easily to so updatable. So it, it is in fact already cached, but using the inode structure. Okay. It's, it's there already. It's the same. Uh, like all the inodes that you you are not currently using, they are still in memory, and they have the initial write pointer that gets uh, modified as you do re, uh, writes or reset. Okay. So it's already there. It's just that. We would take it out of the inode structure, put it in its own more compact uh, uh, memory space, yes. get rid of the inodes that you don't, you are not using, mm -hmm. and uh, on open you just allocate a new inode, link it to that uh, same information, mm -hmm. and then done. Mm -hmm. So you just essentially uh, have a better uh, memory uh, usage. And just update and any other things. The that update are all that not changing at all. Okay, it's the, the same thing will be done. Just different data structures. Because size, sizes will change, right? Of the the zones, right? Uh, as they're written, so just make yeah, sure no, that all that stays the same. Okay. It's just that the, the those that information that mm -hmm. that we we have attached to the inode mm -hmm. uh, will go somewhere else, not uh, directly uh, together with the struct inode. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Oh wait, there's one more question. Uh, this is a bit of a meme. Um, Anyone ask for ZRWA support? Is that on the roadmap? Uh, no. OK, thanks. Well, we, we would need the support in the kernel for that first. Oh, why would you need kernel side support? Uh, I'm sure there's something needed. I have, to be frank, I haven't looked at it. I don't okay. know. OK. It would get rid of the really slick interface that you put together, right? But yeah. Uh, it, I don't know, we could actually play some tricks with it uh, in terms of caching, you know, that I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I haven't spent time, any time thinking about it. Okay, cool, thank you.
All right, thank you.